What exactly is the difference between a four-wheel drive system and an all-wheel drive system? Well, today we're gonna go over the pros, the cons, as well as the differences in both systems. Welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to get into something just a little bit different, maybe throw a curveball at you, especially with the snow coming in a couple weeks. I figured we would take a look at the age old question, what the heck is the difference between a four wheel drive vehicle and an all wheel drive vehicle? Because at the end of the day, they try to do the exact same thing, but they go about it in different manners. And there are pros and cons to each one. And we'll talk about which system may be more advantageous to what you're looking to do. Now behind me, we have my own Ram 2500 Power Wagon, which in my own humble opinion is the off-road king. It is just such a unique truck and I think it's incredibly capable off-road, which is why I love it. Um, and we'll be comparing this four-wheel drive system to an Audi with the Quattro drivetrain, as well as this beautiful 2023 um, Subaru Outback Wilderness Edition, which has um, Subaru's famous Symmetrica all-wheel drive system. Now, jumping into the all-wheel drive side of things, there is a true all-wheel drive system like the Subaru, as well as what I call a replica all-wheel drive system, something like a Honda Ridgeline. And the difference between a true all-wheel drive system and replica is a true all-wheel drive system, all four wheels are always attached to the driveline and can always receive power at any time. The secret behind this is a third differential or a center differential, and that's what makes an all-wheel drive system a true all-wheel drive system. Now, a replica all-wheel drive system, again, something like a Honda Ridgeline or a Honda Pilot, um, the front wheels get 100% of the driving power unless there is slippage detected, then power will be transferred to your rear wheels. In a setup like that, not all four wheels are attached to the driveline at all times, which in my opinion, doesn't really make it an all wheel drive vehicle. And what that setup is missing is that third differential or that center differential. And in its place is some kind of transfer case with a clutch pack, which can send power to the rear wheels and then take it away very quickly. So in my opinion, that is not an all wheel drive system. That is more of a four wheel drive auto, um, which is an interesting term, which we'll get into later in the video. Now, my truck, which is a four wheel drive system, has a front differential as well as a rear differential. It does not, however, have a third or a center differential in its place. I have a fully locking transfer case. Now that is the major difference between a four wheel drive system and an all wheel drive system is a four wheel drive system has a transfer case that is fully locked at all times when in four wheel drive, as well as the fact that a four wheel drive vehicle can disengage either the front wheels or the rear wheels where an all wheel drive vehicle cannot. Now, I don't think that's really earth shattering knowledge or information. However, what I think is sometimes misunderstood is the true differences between both systems. And that's what we'll get into is the advantages and disadvantages. Starting with the all wheel drive system, the number one advantage by far is the fact that this thing can be driven on the road without worry. Traction is always gonna be there, whether it's for putting power down on acceleration, putting power down to get off the line, or if you run into some snow or even some wet road, there's always gonna have the ability to put power to all four wheels if needed, which is really nice. Now on the flip side, driving a four wheel drive vehicle in four wheel drive on dry pavement is a huge no-no, as I'll show you in just a second. A four wheel drive vehicle, in order to drive on the road, you have to be in two wheel drive, meaning that all that traction is not readily available. Um, if you were to hit a slippery um, area of the road, Unfortunately, you wouldn't have the ability to put power to all four wheels like an all wheel drive vehicle does. So as you guys can hear, there's really no binding of the drive line here. So he's cranked all the way over and the wheels are not chirping. There's no gravel getting displaced. It's just a very easy drive here going round and round. Whereas when my truck's in four wheel drive, it's very obvious to hear the drive line binding up and the wheels skipping along. And 
and that's not what you want on dry pavement. It's not too bad here on the gravel, but on dry pavement, you put so much pressure on that drive line, you might even break the transfer case. So the reason why a traditional four wheel drive system binds up like you guys saw with my truck is because there is a difference of speed between your front drive shaft and your rear drive shaft going into your transfer case when the vehicle is turning. I think most people understand that when you're turning, there's a difference of speed on the axle front and rear between the tires. You know, the inside tire spins not as fast as the outside tire. But what people may not understand also is there is a difference in speed between the front axle and the rear axle as a whole, meaning those drive shafts actually spin at different speeds. This is why we see that rear wheel skipping along because with a transfer case like in this truck, it is physically locked to one another. And there's no other way other than the transfer case physically breaking um, than to have that wheel skip or skid along. Now picture on dry pavement, how much force is needed to skid that wheel along. Now, when you're driving in something like snow or mud, there is no change to the drive line. Whenever this truck turns, there is going to have to be wheel skip no matter what. But when we're in snow or mud, there is really no binding up because there's such limited traction, the wheel can just easily skip along and you don't really notice it. Now, as you guys saw with the Subaru as well as the Audi, when driving in a circle, since it has that center differential or that third differential, that takes up the slack from your front axle as well as your rear axle, and it does not cause the drive line to bind. As we saw, this vehicle can just turn in circles with all four wheels engaged to the drive line at all times with the ability to have power given to all four wheels, but there is no binding. And that is the beauty of an all wheel drive system. So when it comes to off road use, that's when we start to see the advantages start to fall in the four wheel drive systems favor. An all wheel drive system, like we've mentioned, all four wheels can receive power. However, not all four wheels are gonna receive power at the same time, which is pretty critical. And that's when we start to see this all wheel drive system be a little bit weaker when it comes to off-road use. No one wheel is locked to another wheel. So if we were to lift this wheel, for example, off the ground, it would spin freely despite all other wheels being attached to the drive line and mechanically being attached to this wheel. The center differential allows this wheel to spin freely independently of all other wheels, despite being all attached to the same drive line. So we have one wheel off the ground here, and like I just mentioned, this wheel is 100% attached to all the other wheels on the vehicle through the drive line, and she just spins freely, just like that. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the car in drive. Oh yeah. So as you can see, this wheel is fully spinning, and this wheel and that wheel and our far wheel are just staying stationary. So as we saw with an all wheel drive system, having that third differential, that center differential, it allows all power to go to a single wheel. And this is a big disadvantage when you're off road because as we mentioned, and as you saw with the Audi, if one wheel has a lot less traction than the rest, it's going to get all the power and you are just gonna remain stuck in the mud or snow that you find yourselves in. Whereas the power wagon, my truck, with that transfer case, the front and rear drive lines are physically locked together. So no matter what, that power is split 50-50 and there will always be power going to your front axle and your rear axle, no matter what. So we're in neutral like we were with the Subaru, like we were with the Audi, except the wheel doesn't turn. The reason is, is because our fully locking transfer case has locked this wheel to the front drive shaft. And the front drive shaft, well, those wheels are still on the ground and they're not gonna move, which is why this wheel does not spin. And that is the main reason why a four wheel drive system with a locking transfer case is much more advantageous when it comes to off-road use. Now, if I was to put this truck in drive with the rear wheels in the air, this truck would still move forward. Unlike what we saw with the Audi, where when we put that car in drive, just the wheel in the air spun, the car did not move at all. 
Now, well, you know what? Maybe I'll even show you guys. Maybe I'll put this thing in drive and I'll show you that this will drag the jack forward, um, which an all-wheel drive system would not do. Now, before everyone yells at me, yes, a lot of all-wheel drive systems come with a limited slip center differential, which does really, really help in terms of that issue. It helps to send power equally to your front and rear axle when there is limited traction. However, my friend's Audi has a limited slip center differential. As you saw when we spun up that wheel, all the driveline power went to the wheel in the air and none of the power went to the other three wheels with all the traction. So a limited slip differential, although it is beneficial, no doubt, is still not going to compare to a true locking transfer case in a four wheel drive system. The only way an all wheel drive system is going to compare to a four wheel drive system is, is if you can physically lock that center differential. And there are some vehicles that come with it um, a Land Cruiser is something that comes to mind with a locking center differential. However, most all-wheel drive vehicles that I've come across do not have that option, which therefore makes an all-wheel drive system just not as advantageous when you are off-road. Now, the last system I want to talk about is four-wheel drive auto, and that is kind of the middle grounds between an all-wheel drive system and a true four-wheel drive system. So. In a four-wheel drive auto system, like I had in my old Ram 1500, um, what you end up having most likely is a clutch pack transfer case of some kind. And basically what happens is when there is slippage detected, that clutch pack and the transfer case will lock up, sending power to either your rear axle or your front axle. And that is four-wheel drive auto. And there are, again, disadvantages and advantages to that system as well. The major advantage of four-wheel drive auto is the convenience, which is why I think we're starting to see it in a lot of pickup trucks as well as SUVs. You can just put in four-wheel drive auto and forget about it. It only sends power to the rear axle or front axle, depending on your vehicle, when there is slippage detected. So you are saving some fuel because both front and rear axles don't have to be spun up all the time. The other big advantage um, is that there is just less wear on your front axle if it doesn't have to be spun up all the time unless there is obviously slippage detected. So that is another nice advantage of four-wheel drive auto. So the major disadvantage in my opinion of a four-wheel drive auto setup is that you have that clutch pack transfer case and it's great for allowing power to be sent to the front drive shaft and then taken away, then sent very quickly because those clutches will take up all that slop. However, when it comes to off-road use, those clutches can start to slip if there's a lot of torque need to be applied to those front wheels. And my old Ram 1500 had a clutch pack transfer case. It worked great 98% of the time. However, there were a couple times when I was off-road where the truck would literally disengage the four wheel drive because the clutch packs were getting too hot and they were starting to slip. And the truck will do that to try and prevent damage. Now, that's the exact opposite thing you want when you're off road. You want to have your four wheel drive system just work. With this truck, I have a true locking transfer case, a traditional transfer case where the gears are literally me meshed together and that's what you want, a gear on gear locking transfer case that no matter what, there'll be power split equally, 50-50 front and rear. And the only reason why it won't be split is if the transfer case blows up. So unfortunately with a clutch pack transfer case, which is what you get in four wheel drive auto vehicles, there is the possibility to wear out those clutches, overheat those clutches um, when you are doing some heavy off-road use. But again, 98% of people, four wheel drive auto transfer cases will work perfectly for them. So those are the differences between a four wheel drive system, an all wheel drive system, and a little bit of four wheel drive auto. Now, if you wanna learn more about four wheel drive auto, 
let me know. I can make another video about it and dive deeper into it. Um, but hopefully that makes sense. I know sometimes driveline stuff can throw some people off. It threw me off for a long time, but if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment down below and I'll try to answer as best as I can. Um, but as always guys, I hope you liked the video. If you did, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. And if you like cool stuff like this, don't forget to subscribe because well, we got lots of cool stuff planned. Anyways, enough of me. We'll see you in the next freaking video.